Hi, my name is Rishik. Science Tube. This section contains five very interesting videos which have topics related to science. These topics can intrigue us and shock us too. Topic 1. Reasons why rats are like us. Here are five reasons how rats are similar to humans. These facts may shock us too, but it's true. Rats have similar traits as humans. Number 1. Rats love. A neuroscientist called Jacques Panksepp and his colleagues figured out that when rats were running around or playing with other rats, they emitted unique sounds at 50 kHz. They later identified that the rats were laughing. Number 2. Rats can think about thinking. Rats can be trained to think about what they know and what they don't using food too. Number 3. Rats are empathetic. Though it may shock you, rats feel empathy. If a rat is stuck in a restrainer, another rat would heroically try to save it, whether it's from the same species or not. Number 4. Rats are conquerors. Rats inhabit large cities, and vast cities such as New York have underground networks full of rats living off human detritus. 5. Rats contribute to science a lot. Most of laboratory tests are done on rats and mice. They have helped in the research and diagnosis of many diseases such as tuberculosis, HIV and AIDS, diabetes, seizures, Alzheimer's and cancer too. Finally, why are rats used for experimenting human medicine? Rats are small and very large in number and they can easily reproduce. They also have mostly similar biological and behavioral traits as us. So, as rats can give better results in testing potential medicines used with humans, they are used in laboratory tests. During this topic, I have observed how rats are used for diagnosing diseases and how they behave. I have inferred that because their traits are similar to humans, they are used for testing medicines potential for usage by humans. I have analyzed the characteristics of rats and how they are similar to humans. Topic 2. What makes Tyreek Hill the fastest in the NFL? Let's see how Tyreek Hill is tested to be the fastest in the National Football League. Here is what we have understood after watching the video. What makes Tyreek the fastest? His short toppy strides increase his contact with the ground, allowing him to initiate cuts and change directions while running. What experiment has he gone through? 43 young football players were challenged to run and catch Hill and grab his flag. What are the unique things that Tyreek does that the kids can't catch him? As his feet are contacting the ground frequently, he could change his direction in a split second and dodge all the kids without them even touching him. In what context are the words ground contact, vector shifts and velocity used? Ground contact refers to Tyreek's feet touching the ground frequently. Vector shift refers to Tyreek changing free direction frequently. Velocity refers to Tyreek's speed in a certain direction. How are these aspects measured? During being tested, Tyreek's movements are, and speed are calculated, giving statistics of his velocity and vector shift. Here are the meanings of some of the terms used in the video. Velocity is the speed of something in a given direction. Ground contact is how much time you are in contact with the ground. And vector shift means changing directions. During learning about Tyreek Hill, I have observed how his legs were moving. He had very short legs. I have inferred that because of his short and choppy strides, he could change direction very easily. I have analyzed the statistics given in the video too. I have documented all the information and meanings in the slides. Finally, I have verified, organized and summarized all the information in this video. Topic 3. The Strand Beast of Deo Janssen These animal-like structures can move by themselves. Dutch artist Deo Janssen says that his offspring can continue his legacy in the beaches and sand dunes. What are strand beasts? Since 1990, Janssen has been creating strand beasts, Dutch for beach animals, which are moving kinetic structures sometimes using wing propellers that resemble walking animals and they are described by Janssen as artificial life. But why were they made? 
Janssen tries to make new artificial life forms to live on the beaches and sand dunes on their own without needing sustenance. He makes clever evolving designs so that they live independently and are remembered. They can use energy available in the nature. The basic materials used for creating strand beasts are PVC pipes for structures, joints for moving, propellers for moving forward, wind designs to use wind energy, sensors for sensing water, wood, fabric airfoils and zip ties. The mechanisms used in these strand beasts are triangular kinetic structures, wind energy, axle rotation for movement and air pressure storage for movement when wind is not available. While learning about the strand beasts, I have observed how the PVC pipes were connected and how the being was moving. I have analyzed the different parts of the strand beasts. I have described the different parts and mechanisms of the strand beasts. I have applied how the different mechanisms are being used while developing the strand beasts. I have documented, verified, organized and summarized all the information given in the video. Finally, I have justified why the strand beasts were created. The stomach is a muscular hollow organ in the gastrointestinal tract of humans and many other animals. The stomach has a dilated structure and functions as a vital digestive organ. In the digestive system, the stomach is involved in the second phase of digestion following chewing. It performs a chemical breakdown due to enzymes and hydrochloric acid. Let's learn more about this vital organ. Let's compare a balloon with a stomach. Both start out small when they are empty. Both turn big when they are filled. And both have a breaking point. But here's the difference. As the balloon is inflated, there is a fixed relationship between pressure and volume. As the pressure increases, so does the volume. That relationship isn't necessarily so in the stomach as its state is determined by not only how much you put in it but mostly nerve inputs from the brain and hormones. A resting stomach can hold from 6.5 to 10 fluid ounces but this can double the moment you start eating or even start salivating or thinking about food. A hot dog eating champion in 2017 consumed 72 hot dogs that's about 2 gallons worth of food. All in all, your brain has the final say in how much you can eat. There have only been 6 documented cases of perfectly healthy stomachs exploding from eating too much. So pretty much, they cannot explode. That, ugh, I ate too much feeling usually occurs when your stomach has 16 to 50 fluid ounces. Finally, the stomach is an amazing, wondrous thing we take for granted every day. Be honest, always listen to your stomach when it says no. While learning about the stomach's capacity, I have observed how the speaker had compared the stomach with the balloon. I have inferred that the stomach state depends not only on how much we eat, but also on nerve inputs and our hormones. I have also defined the importance of the stomach. I have documented different facts related to the stomach. Finally, I have verified, organized, summarized and justified about the importance of the stomach. Hi, now I am going to be speaking about how bird poop can change the world. Peruvian bird poop, also known as guano, is rich in nitrogen and phosphorus. This is so because as birds don't pee, all that nitrogen and phosphorus comes out in a goo form with their poop. In Peru, there is a dry climate. So, unlike other places where when rain falls, all the bird poops, nitrogen and phosphorus will be washed out. In Peru, the nutrients in the poop will stay and they will be used for crops. So, in the 1840s, in Sandy Spring, Maryland, in America, some farmers could not continue growing crops because their, so their soil uh, was not fertile enough. So they were planning to move away to another place so that they could grow crops. But they heard about this Peruvian guano. It was imported from Peru to Baltimore. So they brought a few packets of 
bird poop and started uh, spreading them across the field when they did so as there is a lot of phosphorus and nitrogen which, which is essential for plants to grow immediately plants started to grow much better as plants take in nutrients when they grow for the next crops to grow there should be enough nitrogen and phosphorus in the in the dirt so peruvian guano was used frequently for plants to grow much better so after watching the video about peruvian guano i inferred that as peruvian guano was rich in nitrogen and phosphorus it could be used for plants to grow and it was very useful